हेलो फ्रेंड्स द टॉपिक फॉर टुडे इज 8051 सीरियल पोर्ट प्रोग्रामिंग फॉर डेटा ट्रांसमिशन द एजेंडा फॉर टुडेज वीडियो इज इंट्रोडक्शन एसकॉन रजिस्टर सीरियल डेटा मोड स्टैंडर्ड यूआरटी रिव्यू ऑफ वर्किंग ऑफ सीरियल पोर्ट फॉर डेटा ट्रांसमिशन बॉर्डरेट जनरेशन टाइमर वन मोड टू देन स्टेप्स टू प्रोग्राम एट फॉर सीरियल डेटा ट्रांसफर एंड एग्जाम्पल प्रोग्राम let us start with the introduction 8051 has a serial data communication circuit that uses register yes buff that is serial buffer to hold data register scon controls the data communication register pcon control data rates and pins rxd and txd connect to the serial data network then let us go to the data transmission transmission of serial data bits begin any time data is written to the yes buff transmit inter flag that is tr is set to 1 when data has been transmitted and signifies that yes buff is empty and another data byte can be sent then let us go to the scon register now scon register is a 8 bit register which controls the serial port the bits 7 and 6 they are for the mode selection and here we have four modes so 0 0 is mode 0 that is shift register mode then 0 1 is mode 1 that is standard uart mode then 1 0 is mode 2 that is multi processor mode and 1 1 is mode 3 that is 9 bit uart mode then bit 5 sm2 is used for multi processor communication set or it is cleared by the program to enable multi process then bit 4 ren that is for receive enable bit then bit 3 tb8 that is for transmitted bit 8 and rb8 is for received bit 8 then ti that is transmit inter flag set to 1 at the end of bit 7 time in mode 0 and at the beginning of the stop bit for other mode so this is important flag which we have to clear in the program last zero bit that is ri that is receive interrupt then let us go to the serial data mode 1 that is the standard uart when sm0 and sm1 are set to 0 1 yes buff becomes 10 bit full duplex receiver transmitter that may receive or transmit data at the same time then pin rxd receives all data and pin txd transmits all data transmitted data is sent as start bit 8 data bits that is lsb first and a stop bit then inter flag ti is set once all 10 bits have been sent then received data is obtained in the same order reception is triggered by the following edge of the start bit and continues if the stop bit is true that is at zero level halfway through the start bit interval on receive the stop bit goes to rb8 in scon the baud rate is variable and is computed by timer 1 overflow rate then figure shows the serial data mode 1 so here you can see there is a start bit and then we have the eight data bits and there will be one stop bit so that is how the serial data mode 1 will have total 10 bits then let us move to the review of working of serial port for data transmission so let us take the review first the clock for the serial port to generate the required baud rate of serial data transfer is generally provided by the timer 1 working in mode 2 that is the auto reload mode the scon register is loaded with the required serial mode start stop bits etc to serially transmit the data the data is written to the yes buff register as soon as the data is moved to the yes buff register it is frame with start and stop bits and data frames that is start bit plus 8 or 9 bits of data plus stop bit and are transmitted one bit at a time on the txd pin at initialized baud rate so whatever is the baud rate as per that it will be transmitted once the serial data transmission is complete the transmit inter flag is set indicating that user can write the next data into the yes buff so this is how serial port data transmission will work then let us go to the next part 
that is the timer modes so the 8051 timer it has four modes mode 0 mode 1 mode 2 and mode 3 so when m1 m0 is 0 0 it is mode 0 13 bit timer mode 0 1 it is mode 1 16 bit timer mode 1 0 it is mode 2 8 bit auto reload mode which we are going to use here and 1 1 is mode 3 that is the split timer mode then let us go to the hold rate generation timer 1 mode 2 let us see the figure so here you can see in this mode the timer act as a auto reload timer the th1 holds the reload value and tl1 acts like a 8 bit timer when tl1 reaches ffh and is subsequently incremented instead of resetting to 0 0 it will reset to value stored in th1 that is the reload value hence the time delay between overflow is about 12 multiplied by 256 minus th1 divided by frequency so this mode is commonly used to set the baud rate for the serial communicator. then let us go to the t mod register in order to configure the t mod register we must know the bits it is a 8 bit register 7th bit is gate for timer 1 so when set the timer only runs while int1 bar is high 6th bit is t slash t bar that is counter timer select bit so when it is 0 it is for the timer when it is 1 it is for the counter bit 5 is m1 and bit 4 is m0 these two bits are for the mode selection of timer 1 then bit 3 is same gate then bit 2 is t slash t bar and bits 0 and 1 are m0 and m1 for timer 0 so the similar function will be there for timer 0 let us configure the t mod for timer 1 mode 2 so we'll take gate 0 t slash t bar again 0 m1 will be 1 m0 will be 0 that is mode 2 then the last four bits they will be 0 because they are for the timer 0 so we get 20h so that indicates timer 1 mode 2 then let us go to the next part that is steps to program 8051 for serial data transfer first step t mod register is loaded with the value 20h indicating the use of timer 1 in mode 2 that is 8 bit auto reload to set the baud rate then th1 is loaded with one of the values to set the baud rate for serial data transfer so we'll see these values when we see the example then step 3 the scon register is loaded with the value 50h indicating serial mode 1 where 8 bit data is framed with the start and stop bits to get the 10 bit for transmission so here in the figure the scon register is configured with value 50 so we take sm0 sm1 as 0 1 that is for mode 1 then sm2 is 0 ren is equal to 1 and tb8 rb8 both are 0 ti and ri both are 0 so we get 50h then fourth step tr1 is set to 1 to start the timer 1 then fifth step ti is cleared by clr ti instruction then step 6 the character byte to be transferred serially is returned into the yesbuff register then seventh step the ti flag is monitored with the use of instruction jnb ti to see if the character has been transferred completely eighth step to transfer the next byte go to step 5 and then the steps are repeated in this way we can transfer the characters one by one let us go to the first example write a program to transfer letter h serially at 9600 baud continuously so here the given baud rate is 9600 so we'll calculate the value of for th1 so th1 is equal to 256 minus 11.0592 divided by 12 multiplied by 32 multiplied by 9600 that is the baud rate so we get the value as 253 that is nothing but fd in hexadecimal or minus 3 in decimal we'll go to the table so here you see the baud rate and the 
th1 decimal value and the th1 hexadecimal value for 9600 the decimal value is minus 3 and hexadecimal value is ft the values for other baud rates they are given here we are not going to use those values in this video then let us go to the program so first we'll load the timer 1 mode 2 we have already taken the value 20 so we'll load that into the tmod register so we use the instruction move tmod comma hash 20h then we'll load the value in th1 minus 3 decimal so for that we use the instruction move th1 comma hash minus 3 that is for selecting the 9600 baud rate then next we configure the scon register with 50 so we use the instruction move scon comma hash 50 so that is 8 bits one stop bit and rn enabled so that is what we have done previously then we start the timer 1 by setting the tr1 so we use the instruction set b tr1 then we load the yes buff with letter h for transferring so for that we use the instruction move yes buff comma hash h. so the ascii value of h will be written into the yes buff register then we wait for the last bit to be sent or transferred so for that we use the jnb ti instruction and we are in the loop wait is the label for that then once the transmission is completed we use the instruction plr ti for clearing the ti flag for the next character now here in this case there is no next character that's why we make use of the instruction sjmp l1 so that the same h character is repeatedly transmitted so in this way we can write the program to transfer letter h serially at 9600 or continuously then let us go to example 2 write an alp to transfer message god continuously at a baud rate of 9600 now here we have three characters in the message so here we first load the character to be transmitted in register a and then call a subroutine send to load the characters into yes buff and transmit it and then return to the main program for the next character so let us go to the program so the first instruction we give again is move tmod comma hash 20 so this will set the timer 1 in mode 2 that is the auto reload mode then move th1 comma hash minus 3 so this will set the baud rate to 9600 then next we use the instruction move scon comma hash 50 so again that is for configuring the scon register 8 bit one stop and rn in it then again we start the timer one by using the instruction set b tr1 then we load the first character that is g into the a register so move a comma hash g then now here we call the subroutine send a call send so this will call the subroutine and the program control will be transferred to the subroutine so in the subroutine you find move yes buff comma a so we have to move the character to yes buff so the character in accumulator is moved to the yes buff register now once the character is moved into s buff register the transmission will start then we have to wait until the serial transmission is completed so we use the instruction jnb ti wait once that is done we come out of that with a clr ti instruction that is for clearing the transmit then we give the instruction return to return from the subroute so it will return to the main program so in the main program again now we load the letter o in a register move a comma hash o then again we call the subroutine a call send now once we call the routine the character o will be transmitted and again it will come back to the main program where we are coming to the instruction move a comma hash d 
series for transferring the letter d then again we call the subroutine so again the instructions in the subroutine they are executed and the letter d is transmitted now once that is done we have the instruction sjmp l1 that is the label so it will again go back to instruction move a comma hash g that is for transferring the letter g so in this way the message cod will be continuously transmitted at a baud rate of 96 so with this we come to the end of this program if you like the video press the like button share with your friends and subscribe to our channel engineering and technology for you and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notifications for our future videos on this topic then thanks for watching have a nice day